Hi, I'm Rick Snow, and today we're going to talk about overdates in the Flying Eagle, Indian Scent, and Lincoln Scent series. Uh, overdates are made when uh, dyes from one year are reworked to make, uh, make them serviceable for the next year. Uh, up until 1909, uh, dyes, this is a dye, uh, dyes were uh, impressed, or call, we call hubbed, uh, with the design and all the elements except for the date. And then the dates were put on so they can make as many um, uh, undated dyes as they want and then later uh, put in the date. And if they want to uh, use those for the next year, all they have to do is soften the dye and uh, punch in a new date over the old one. The metal moves a little bit so uh, usually it's not uh, so noticeable, but we can still tell them uh, tell overdates by uh, looking carefully. Uh, after 1909, they started putting the dates in uh, all together with the design, and uh, so every uh, overdate from 1909 onward is actually a double die. Okay, so um, that's a, a kind of dividing year on the. The uh, uh, Flying Needle series has two varieties that are overdates, and they're both 1858s over 7s. Uh, <coughs> the first one is the Snow one, which is uh, the uh, uh, classic one that everyone knows about. It's in the Red Book and all that. And uh, you can see in the uh, upper right hand corner above the 8 is uh, a bold 7. And uh, it, there's also uh, other identifying features to this die. Uh, there's a broken wing tip in the uh, right feather of the uh, uh, eagle. Uh, this is a hub variety, so it can show up on multiple dies, but it doesn't show up on too many. Uh, on, uh, one of them is an 1858, uh, uh, 1857. <coughs> and uh, another thing that uh, you can identify this die with is a little die dot that's above the first eight between the eight and the eagle. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, this is actually a misplaced digit. It's a corner of a one digit and so it looks kind of triangular. And uh, what misplaced digits are is when uh, the uh, it's kind of an ad hoc uh, way of uh, 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 testing the hardness of the die. They take a, a digit punch and kind of tap it into the die and if it makes a mark it's soft and they can work on it. And uh, if, uh, if they no mark is made then the, the die is, is ready for uh, striking coins. Now um, the 58 over 7 uh, there's uh, two varieties, okay, uh, as I mentioned, but the, the snow one comes in die states, okay. The early die state, you can see the seven very clearly. The late die state, uh, the seven, they took the die out and they polished it and it wore away some of the seven, most of the seven. And uh, so this is a late die state, you can't really see the seven too well. Uh, PCGS now designates these as strong and weak, so um, you don't want the weak one, uh, or you don't want to pay a big premium for the weak one. Uh, here's two examples. <coughs> this one's a strong variety, uh, and uh, so this one you can see the seven very well. And this one's mint state 63. I have also have one here that's a weak variety. And uh, uh, you can barely see the seven on this one. Now, this one's a mint state 64, the weak one, and the strong one is mint state 63. The strong one is worth fifteen thousand dollars. The weak one, even though it's a higher grade, is only worth twenty five hundred dollars. So, very small premium for the weak one. Don't be paying big premiums for ones where you can't see the seven. Because of that. Uh, there's some uh, that are in holders that do not designate strong or weak um, that are actually late die states. 
and you don't want to be paying a big premium. When they show up in auction, there are people that mistakenly buy them, uh, but uh, they don't go for the full amount of money, and as such, uh, they tend to drive the prices reported down. So when you see a price in, say, the gray sheet or Red Book even, uh, Coin World Trends, it's going to be uh, a little bit below market uh, because of the uh, differences in the die states on those. So if you see the seven really clear, it's worth a, a good premium. Uh, also, uh, most all of them have uh, weak tail feathers, so the strike is uh, 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 typically a little weak. Uh, if you found one with a really good strike, uh, that would be worth a premium as well. Now the other variety is the Snow 7, which is totally different, no die states on this one, but the uh, 7 is uh, uh, just a little dash off to the right of the date. There's also another dash to the left of the date, which is left over from the uh, 1 digit. It's also a double die on the word United. So, uh, and that's a, this is a quite rare variety, uh, and it's not as well known, so it doesn't bring the premiums as much as the Snow One, even though it's rarer. But uh, it is still a worthy variety and uh, one that should be included in a basic set. Now, one thing about overdates is they are uh, collected as separate dates in the set, so they have a higher desirability over, say, double dies or repunch dates and things like that. So uh, that brings their demand uh, up quite a bit. Now the next one we're going to talk about is the 88 over 7. And um, this was uh, discovered in 1959 by Jim Ruddy. And uh, just about when he was getting into involved with uh, uh, Dave Bowers in a partnership. And they found two uncirculated uh, pieces, in, uh, and uh, then they they said, "Well, let's see how rare this is, and we'll go out and try and find some more." So after six months of searching, they never found any more, and uh, so they sold them uh, for five thousand uh, dollars or uh, around that price range. And uh, it doesn't sound like much now, but at the time, that was more than what Stella's four dollar gold pieces sold for. So it was uh, quite a bit of money for uh, that period, 1960 or so. <coughs> and uh, I have one here, and this one is graded AU58. Um, now uh, the little under digit, the seven, is, is quite small, just at the base of the eight. So it's, it's kind of hard to see. You need a magnifying glass. But uh, one trick uh, is all of the ones that I've seen that are above VG grade have a die break or die cud, we call it, uh, right at 9 o'clock in the denticles. And uh, so even at arm's length, you can tell that it's a, a 88 over 7 because of that die cud. Now, um, uh, back in 2013, I uh, was searching eBay and I found one of these. And uh, uh, it had just come up for sale. And uh, so uh, it was 99 cents. <laughs> so uh, I put a bid of $20 on it. And then I put a snipe bid for 8500 and uh, went away. Now, that was the longest week I've ever known. <laughs> but the next week when the sale finished, I finally checked it. And I had won the coin for $48. And uh, that was great. And then I uh, waited and waited for the coin to arrive. And it did, and uh, sent it. And I thought it was an XF uh, when I when I saw the picture, and I thought it would grade XF, but it graded at a VF35. Uh, so I took it to the next show. I didn't post it, you know, for sale right away because I wanted to regrade it. But another dealer, uh, Harry Labstein, saw it, and uh, or I, I showed it to him, and uh, kind of gloating, I guess. And he and he bought it for thirteen five, thirteen thousand five hundred. And um, I was kind of a, depressed that I didn't sell it to one of my customers, but anyway, he paid me fair money for it. 
but uh, uh, a month later I see on his price list that now it's in an XF holder <laughs> and asking much more. I called him up and I said, I'd like to buy it back. Can I buy it for fourteen five? Give you a thousand dollar profit? And he said, yeah, okay, fine. So, um, so I bought it back and then I sold it to my customer. So anyway, that was a, a fun cherry pick. 88 over 7s, everyone's looking for these uh, on eBay, through rolls and, you know, junk boxes or wherever. And it's very hard to find. A few people have found one, uh, but uh, it's a very, very tough uh, coin to find. The last uh, overdate is uh, newly discovered. It's a 1943 over 2 uh, from the San Francisco Mint. Uh, it was already known as a double die but now it's known as an overdate. I have one here and it's graded Mint State 67 and it's one of the finest known. Um, this is a coin that the value is uh, unknown right now because of its new designation. It's the only overdate in the Lincoln Cent series. So overdates are above de double die. So I would place this above say a 69S double die as far as its desirability. Um, and so uh, time will tell as to what level, uh, what price level this goes to, but it's certainly one that you can, you can uh, cherry pick. And even if it's uh, known and priced, it's still maybe cherry pickable as a, uh, at the right price. So uh, anyway, these are overdates in the Scent series, and uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Uh, you can go to my website, which is IndianScent.com and uh, check that out and uh, thanks a lot and I hope to see you again.